Many of our conservation areas have been enhanced. Uh, the one local to me where I work, Port Online Villages, had new developments on which have been deemed okay and have enhanced it, the, the, uh, the area. So it, it doesn't mean, conservation doesn't mean you will never build or will never create anything. The, again, green belt, again, we have debated and it, it, we know now that to simply say because something is green belt, again, nothing would ever be built there because there are special circumstances and there are green belt which is on the edge of the green belt or edge of the town centre that, that, that can lend itself. So, so they're not, not tab in tablets of stone. So I think hopefully members of the audience and the committee all accept that each application has to be taken on, it, on its merits. Things I noticed on the on the on the on the visitor site, I got there slightly too early, so I had a drive around, be familiarise myself with, with, with the Eastern Village uh, settlement conservation area. The housing development is very much on the edge and where the sort of old town and you can see where the development offices uh, are taken over is very much on the edge. So the housing development and if built to a to a style may may not do any particular great damage. It is 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 a view that could be taken. The other issue um, is this issue of community gain. You know, there seems to be a huge community gain. And talking again with someone who has experience of a rugby club within their ward, uh, Beckham Park Rugby Club sits within my ward, they are part of the community. They can do an awful lot to enhance that, the, the prospects of young people. And rugby union is a growing sport, and particularly growing more for women uh, 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 as things go on. So it does lend itself to actually being a, a catalyst for young people to become positively engaged uh, in, in, a, in a better future. Now, does that all way up to mean that, that it needs our special circumstances? One could argue that. The pavilion that is there at the moment is pretty poor. The changing facilities are abysmal. I, I went in by mistake when I went on, on, on a site visit. Um, it, it is a chance to enhance this whole area and then put something back into the community. And rugby clubs can and will and will continue to be part of that community. It's not unusual for villages to have cricket clubs, rugby clubs as part of their heart and soul. So the final issue is traffic. I would imagine on match day, parking is awful around there because it's only a very small car park. So if you talk about at least 30 players and a coach turning up for the opposition, even on minimum match day, I reckon traffic congestion there would be worse and this will be enhanced by a bigger, bigger car park, a better car park. So I've looked at this application and the final thing that has put me to um, some ease is condition 17, which is about phasing. That means the houses don't get built and then all of a sudden the rugby club can say, oh, uh, we're not going to build up the building, we're not going to do all that. But actually intrinsically linked, so the housing is intrinsically linked to the development of the training facility uh, and the pavilion. So I'm comfortable about that. And the final thing that has pushed me to think in, unless people persuade me otherwise as the debate goes on, they may be begin to believe and think is, I know and trust the three world councillors very well, um, they've always defended this village, uh, they've defended that community admirably over the years, and if they've been persuaded by the merits of the application, I think this committee should be persuaded by the merits of the application. So that's what I'm at the moment. Thank you, Steve. David. Yes, uh, uh, thanks, Chair. Um, I think we need to recognise that we need to support our heritage. There's absolutely no doubt about that. We have a lot of it on the world which we must preserved, so I understand where our heritage champion is coming from, but that does not mean that we can continue to live in the past. Life moves on and we have to accept and respect changes in circumstances, changes in view, changes in activities and changes in the perceptions of the use, particularly of our sports facilities. As people will know, I am a total and full supporter of maintaining the Green Belt whenever it's possible, but on this particular instance I've looked at this and as the officers have said, it's finally balanced, but having been on site at the site visit on Tuesday, I came to the conclusion that the benefits that could accrue to the community as a result of this development going ahead, provided we can organise this uh, 106 agreement to reduce the speed of traffic in the village and prevent the traffic going through the village when it's all possible, then I'm in favour of this development. It could be finally balanced, but in my opinion, it's the right decision to make 
on this site, and we need to look at each particular site, whether it involves uh, green belt or not, on its particular merits. And having looked at this one on its merits, I'm supporting both the officer's recommendations and the three ward councillors' support for this particular application. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, David Stewart. things that we do need to look at. These are always tricky ones, as, as has been mentioned, because we start, the law will start, uh, because we tend to be planned out with the assumption that, well, you'll have to really demonstrate to me some benefit uh, for us to go against the, uh, the policy um, of, of the council. So we start really with um, the, the, the current use of the land uh, as a recreational um, so it's so there to play sports on. One of the objectors indicated that that's been the case for uh, many years, potentially centuries. So it's been it, it's been put aside you know, like for for <coughs> recreation, for the playing uh, of sport. And with that, in this day and age, comes a number of other um, things, as has been mentioned, changing facilities need to be up to date. Um, there'll be walks to play sports in the they so parking. Uh, is always an issue. I'm familiar with the old village itself, and I'm familiar with uh, the parking issues that, uh, that, that uh, have been raised. And I am also familiar with the, uh, the problems um, of speeding uh, through the uh, through the mountain uh, area. So now we address. Now, now we come to see what is being done to address ongoing problems, and what is being done to, <coughs> to add. Uh, benefit uh, to the um, uh, to, to the area to the community. We're getting a car park which will take um, match day traffic along the chapel off the uh, off the main road and of course the conservation area that would be a benefit. Um, we're getting tra traffic um, uh, car and signs um, and um, that would be a benefit because not all of the traffic is is visiting conservation. I think a lot of it is passing through the village on its way to Eastern Ferry, which in its own right is, is a destination which the House of Champion uh, probably ought to have uh, problems and so on. Um, it's, a, it's a great place to go, Eastern Ferry, which uh, reduce cost of the river, etc. Um, we can reduce, that's a lot of traffic passing through the, uh, the conservation area, uh, and very often uh, that's been, so we can attempt to reduce that, that would be a uh, benefit. The issue of the youth club, you know, that's, that is a, uh, a, a key one, uh, I think, that, uh, uh, that's in my mind um, and sways me, like David and Steve, to, uh, to think actually the benefits that we're getting uh, outweigh the potential harm that, we're, that we must uh, uh, consider when, when looking at applications in the Greenbelt. The, the housing development that goes with it, the, the enabling development, I'm persuaded given its positioning to the north of the south, of, of the south, will not have the impact that people seem to uh, uh, be laying before us to consider. Uh, with the core conservation area, which is centered around the church, very much to the center, uh, uh, to the uh, uh, south uh, of the site as we look, uh, we look at, at, at the plan. So yeah, I, I'm happy to, to say in my own mind, yes, it is fine and balanced only because of where we start with our wish to, to protect conservation areas as much as possible and the green belt as much as possible. But the boxes that are getting ticked in terms of community benefit they weren't present for those that were mentioned in the application we looked at last month. Still, they weren't present at all. Uh, that was the benefit purely of private um, um, interests. I can see benefit for uh, sports, uh, for the youth club, for the wider community. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, uh, yeah. um, A couple of points in that question, if I may see whichever officer you feel is appropriate to answer the, to answer the question. Um, first, I found it quite useful to hear from the Heritage Champion uh, in terms of his views. I accept that it's not going to be in every planning application, only at those at his discretion. He has been appointed to the role. I think Jenny Fair has given the opportunity to, to expand upon his views uh, when it affects that role. Um, secondly, I do think that these, these almost um, regular applications to build on the Greenbelt are 
a reflection again on the council's failure to produce a local plan to protect the green belt. Uh, we know that government action is about to commence by the end of this month because we've had 14 years, 14 years to come up with a local plan to defend the green belt and we haven't. So I think this is another site that is at risk because of that failure to produce a local plan. Uh, but again, looking at the planning history that's outlined in the report, I think this, this authority has on six different occasions uh, supported the rugby club with various applications uh, to build, develop and improve the facilities they have on site. Uh, and equally, we have on two occasions refused applications that we felt would damage the green belt there, including one which would have seen a school built on, on the grounds. So I think overall, um, I think the authority has been supportive of the rugby club and the need to uh, support facilities within Eastern Village for that. Uh, my question, Chair, if you can direct it to the appropriate officer, uh, reference has been made by I think Mr Allen when he spoke and also in the comments from the Eastern uh, Village Preservation Society, uh, their concern of the council's impartiality given the links with the application and then when Mr Allen spoke he made reference to I think from memory £376,000 uh, that was going to be provided by the local authority, I'm guessing from the capital programme. Um, was, was that £376,000? What is it for? Is it for the youth club? Is it for the youth club and the rugby club? Can we have some clarity on what that money is for? And has it been agreed? And are there any conditions applied to that money, please? I'm seeing. Can I direct that statement, please? Um, thank you, Chair. Uh, just to confirm that the council is funding from the capital programme the community element of the clubhouse facility. Uh, the cost of that is approximately uh, £376,000. Um, wherever there's council involvement in an, app, an application, then that's purely legitimate. If the planning committee here wants to make a decision on that development by way of considering obviously all of the material planning considerations and any decision that the members are minded to make in approving this application clearly has to be referred to the Secretary of State to determine one way or another. So in terms of probity and transparency, that's the way those um, arrangements uh, work. Do you want to comment on that? Yeah, can I, please, Chair. Um, can, can the um, Assistant Director, then, when you said the money is for the community aspect of the development, are we talking about the bar within the clubhouse, or what exactly is your definition of the community element? And also, can you clarify, will this application, if it's approved tonight, be referred to the Secretary of State. Is that what you're saying? Yes, on, on the latter point there, if members of the Planning Committee are minded to approve this tonight, it will have to be referred to the Secretary of State. The Secretary of State then has a period of time to decide whether to call that in and determine it himself, or whether he doesn't wish to do that. If he doesn't wish to call it in, then the Council can issue the decision notice. Okay, that's a standard procedure and as you probably know it's been recently uh, seen on the planning applications. Um, now in terms of the community uh, facility, my understanding of that is that, that is for the two rooms that are being provided here um, within the clubhouse. They've got a range of costs in front of me and there's also a contribution um, towards the professional fees you know, obviously for that element of the building. So the housing money that is coming in is funding the clubhouse, the club and the changing facilities department, all of those types of things. And the council's money is funding the community rooms that will be used uh, for those purposes. Thank you, David. Trina? Thanks, Chair. Um, yeah, this is a very ambitious planning proposal uh, with huge benefits to the uh, community. Um, my it's just a quick question and just a confirmation really I suppose um, it's on the affordable housing issue and um, the development of the 21 houses it would normally require the inclusion of the element of affordable housing but it you have a viability assessment done and uh, it's been proven that it won't be financially viable is this because of the community element and the benefits to the community uh, can you just give me some a bit more explanation as to why we're not having any affordable housing? Please, thank you. Thank you, Sharon. Uh, thank you, Chair. I mean, there are several factors, but as I understand it from the uh, sourcing assessment, 
a lot of it's concerned for the quality of the build that they have to do on the site for the housing because it's on, in a conservation area and what we'd be looking at for that, the, the spec we'd be looking at for that kind of development. Thank you. The other aspect, uh, Trina, in, in respect of that, is we do have the, uh, the speed control as well as part of the section on the six degrees. Okay, um, Pat? Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, can I take past hacker first and then I'll take back theory? <laughs> obviously with the two pads here, uh, with them next door. Chair, um, a lot of views obviously tonight, uh, strong views for and against uh, this application. And you know, you respect the views on both sides of the argument without a doubt, some well researched views, some a lot a lot of experienced people who lived in the area for an awful long time, who lived in the village. Certainly, we heard an awful lot tonight from both those sides and both those arguments. Um, just a couple of things of a may. Uh, some have been mentioned, some haven't. Obviously, it gives the council uh, much needed housing stock if this goes ahead. By the time when the government, of course, demanded targets must be met uh, by 2020. It also gives, you could argue, its well established sport and club facility. Much, a much needed economic boost to ensure its sustainability and that continues to serve the local community. Of course we heard, as I said, uh, strongly uh, from Mr Allen against that who questioned that um, and gave some uh, assertions um, that he thought that was wrong. But we can only go on what we've heard, for instance, from the local councillors, you could argue, of people on the ground we had one of the local councillors speaking who's represented the area for 35 years um, and he tells us that the, the club itself uh, will, it will help their sustainability plans. I am disappointed and I was glad that my colleague uh, Trina Johnson brought it up, the aspect and we've heard why uh, regarding affordable housing which is not part of the scheme for the reasons set out in page 31 as we heard from. Sheila, Sheila Day. Um, uh, but I'm, I am of a mind to realise that the community benefits outweigh any negatives. And I do think the community benefits are special circumstances that are different to other schemes, for instance, further on, where we're talking about affordable housing. I think it's different in this particular case. If you do outweigh those negatives, I think, in terms of affordable housing. And as we can see, as well as the three local councillors with years of experience between them on the ground in that area. There's been numerous petitions, 286 individual letters of support, um, which I would say is, is an awful lot of people and an awful lot of residents uh, who do support this. Uh, the right of the community uh, to use a sports field we heard uh, from the ward councillor and over 150, he said, were there recently and fully integrated uh, the, the, the club is fully integrated, he said, as well with the local community. Uh, and he gave a lot of examples, and he said ages 5 to 15 years of age, male and female, uh, were there. Um, so, <coughs> lastly, if I may chair, um, I think it's an important point as well. And again, we heard from the local ward council, and they said they've been fighting for this for a long time. Uh, and as we can see uh, on page 25, Amongst other things, it, it will provide a 20 mile per hour speed limit reduction scheme through Eastern Village and over 140, I think it is, 140 uh, car parking spaces, which in terms of the transport surely has got to help, I would have thought, with the village. Thanks, Jane. Thank you, Pat. Pat Cleary? Yeah, this is Jane Cleary. Question if I may, based on some of the, the figures that they would. Um, Reference earlier, and also the um, the officer at the beginning said that the enabling development was to fund the the cost of the clubhouse, etc., plus ongoing maintenance costs, which uh, raised a question in my mind whether the funds that are coming in from this enabling development um, is part of those funds designed to sustain the club over a period of time, or could we just clarify what ongoing maintenance costs uh, relates to? Does it does it just relate to the cost of maintaining the building or is there something more to it than that? Because obviously 
you know, as an authority, we wouldn't want to use capital receipts to fund day-to-day -to -day, um, expenditure. I'm just looking for a bit of clarification around that, please. David, can I ask you to come up again? <coughs> yes, I'll, um, I'll do my best. My understanding of the um, ongoing maintenance is, yes, the maintenance costs of, of the building. Um, that. Um, but that is coming from the housing uh, generated monies. Um, the money that the council is putting in from the capital program is here for the actual build, and then we have other revenue streams that will meet the ongoing uh, running costs of that particular facility. Okay, Denise. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, very exciting application, uh, and it is going to obviously benefit the people of Eastham and beyond. So I am actually minded to move approval on this application. So if everybody else has finished speaking, Chair. I think, has everybody finished speaking? Okay, so Denise has moved to approval. Do we have a second on it? David, second it. All those in favour of approval subject to conditions listed, the late list, the section 106 agreement, and the fact it will be referred to the Secretary of State. All those in favour? Those against? Abstentions? That, that's applications carried. Thank you very much. In fact, the last members who are here for that this application to be um, out of this room is quickly planned to be safe. Thank you. Thank you. Um, for members, we did say we moved to agenda item 10 next, which is page 69 to 76 of the whole plan.
Um, so the current application you have for you is the same as the one that was previously refused mm -hmm. by the on appeal. So you have um, three story houses on the frontage that fall closer to Banks Road to more reflect the sort of middle of the line along Banks Road. And that enables them to have gardens to the rear and access and park to the rear. Similar to the flats that are there at the minute. Um, and then there's the one detached property, Pot 40, which is which is the behind the property of the Magistral Drive. Um, I mean, we, we have to use the appeal decision to influence how we assess this application because it is material consideration. And on the basis of the inspector's consideration of the interface distance as the impact of the development, the visual appearance, um, we can't use those as reasons to, to object to the application in this situation. The issue of affordable housing, um, the applicant in this instance has gone down a different route, which they, was open to them for the last application and then they didn't go down. So, when you have a situation where a building exists as a brownfield site, um, the incentive for the government to develop this site is the uh, vacant building credit. So, what happens then is the any additional floor space which is created beyond the building floor uh, um, the, the existing floor space is taken away, so they're credited with that uh, as existing floor space. And everything that's left over, the affordable housing, any extra floor space affordable housing criteria was applied to. Um, so in this, is, in this instance, going through the various calculations, so we're looking for 20% in this area, looking at market values, looking at discount relating to the portion of the space on the site. We come up with a figure, or well, the applicant comes up with a figure of around about £9,000, which we agree with, it follows our assessment, and we're happy with that. That would form a community to sort of to an agreement to provide affordable housing elsewhere in the borough not on this site. Um, so on the basis that we think it brings a brand new site back into use with an attractive development that's appropriate in the location and enhances the site, uh, it is recommended for approval of subject to one of its And there are petitioners, two petitions for this application. Thank you, Sheila. Um, can the petitioners, lead petitioners, make themselves known to me, please? Would you both like to speak on this matter? Okay, can you decide between yourselves who's going to come first, please? Okay, thank you. As I said to uh, the previous petitioners, if, if there is some duplication, please try to avoid repeating the same things. Uh, if I could ask you to state your name and your address, and you have up to five minutes, and I'll let you know when you have one minute left. And there's a button on your microphone there, you can turn on. Do you want that now? It's not. My name is Debbie Kinney, 6 Ashton Drive, West Curley. Despite the unanimous rejection of the previous application by the Planning Committee, this inspector at appeal incomprehensibly concluded that the 14 new houses crammed into the plot of Ashton Court would not be overbearing or cause loss of privacy and light to existing residents. Even the Starfish Group, in its standard statement, uses phrases such as the tight nature of the scheme and the site being very restricted in terms of space. There was reference in the inspector's statement to adequate distances between existing buildings. The site scale map clearly demonstrates living room window of 6 Ashton Drive to gable end of the proposed plot 14 house to be below regulation distance by 2 metres. There are many other breaches of the council's separation distances policy. The inspector referred to the Highways Authority as having no objection to the scheme. Attempts to clarify the Highways Authority's agreement with Starfish's calculation of just 14 car spaces as being adequate have not been successful. The SPD4 parking standard calculates a maximum parking allowance for these 12 three-bedroom and two two-bedroom houses as 27 spaces although reducing that number would be encouraged, provided it was demonstrated that no overspill parking would have an adverse impact on the safety or immunity of existing residents. Each proposed house plot has just space for two wheelie bins. The council is now considering four bins per house. The new residents may well then choose to park on the road due to lack of space. The busy Ashton Drive Banks Road Junction is often very congested with parked cars already. The entrances to the 
proposed new houses lie just 20 metres from this junction on either side of the road. The council is also proposing new parking restrictions on Banks Road, which will, again, lead to much increased parking in Ashton Drive. Overall, it is therefore clear that this development will have a serious impact on road safety and amenity of existing residents and occupiers. Rather than accepting this application, I would suggest questions should be being asked. I urge you to reject this application. Thank you very much. Thank you. Would the other objective like to come forward? Sorry. Would you like to come forward? Yes, sorry. It's good to be here. Again, if you can state the name of your address, please, and you will have up to five minutes to speak. Nice. So, you know, we have there. so um, I'm Alan Lundell, and I live in Banks Road, immediately opposite the site of the proposed development. Um, this application, we're told, is identical to the APP 160083 planning application. Um, the fee, £5,390, has been waived by the council because it's apparently the same as the previous one. The planning committee in 2016 was told that the footprint of the 13 proposed dwellings fronting the site takes up less than the existing buildings and even when including the plot, proposed plot 14 to the rear of the site, there would still likely be no increase in the building footprint on the site. The planning inspector stated that the council have indicated that the footprint of the proposed development is actually smaller than the existing buildings. In 2016, the vacant building credit was introduced by the government. Vacant building credit is accompanied by financial incentives for brownfield or previously developed land development. It was at this point that members of the public started to hear a different story about the footprint of the proposed buildings. The 2017 application statement stated that the proposed buildings would involve an increase in floor space of 48.8 square metres, providing the developer with a potential of £4,990.25 financial incentive in the form of vacant building credit to be approved by the council. The latest planning officer's report, today's one, states, now states, there'd be an increase of 90.88 square metres on the existing floor space, providing the developer with a potential 9,291 financial incentive in the form of a vacant building credit to be provided by the council. There have to date been four different descriptions of the footprint of the proposed 14 houses, so it's impossible for members of the public to know what the genuine position is. How can these different descriptions of the same application be explained? The two applications are clearly very different entities. Stella Edwards, the council's own principal strategic housing and investment officer, has stated that vacant building credit should not be applied to this particular case, as the building was actively closed by the owner. The Lead Local Flood Authority has stated its opposition to this planning application. The Lead Local Flood Authority recommends refusal of planning commission. The Lead Local Flood Authority has also stated that the site cannot be classed as previously developed or brownfield for the purposes of the water drainage system. The Lead Local Flood Authority has stated that in the absence of adequate information to assess the principles of surface water drainage associated with the proposed development, we object to this application and recommend refusal of planning permission. The Wirral Society has stated its opposition to this planning application. The refurbishment and modernisation of the 22 retirement flats, together with the return of elderly residents to Ashton Court, is supported by a large number of West Kirby residents. 1,025 people signed one petition and 73 signed another in just a few days, both objecting to this application. West Kirby residents do not want to look at 13 three-storey houses with ground floor walls which have dark blue facing brickwork. Magenta Living should be providing housing for those in housing need and should not be demolishing social accommodation for the elderly in order to build £300,000 houses in West Gurley to be sold on the open market. There should be an investigation into the planning department's handling 
of the APP 16-00823 and AP 17-01222 climbing applications. 2017 application reaches Excuse me, have one minute left. Thank you. the Council's strategic SPD2 planning policy and the Council's GRE1 policy. This is not acceptable. These houses could well be a blot on the landscape of West Kirby. And if you vote in support of it, we know where the blame will lie. Many West Kirby residents looked at the planning committee to reject the APP 17-01222 planning application. Ashton Court should be removed from the council's Brownfield Register since its inclusion was in clear breach of the National Planning Policy Framework definition of previously developed land.
And we could easily be, be fair with those buildings, knocking a couple of flats out and putting in bathrooms and kitchens. It's an ideal spot for, for, for old people to, to, um, to have flats. And I very, very much recommend that, we, that that happens. Now, I know there's an inspector's report, and I know you're concerned about that. But um, the, main, the facts are that it's, it's a bad decision. And surely somebody is able to stand up when there's a bad decision. The facts are that um, we've been let down by the system here because it's clearly an overbearing development and with overlooking of houses, especially overlooking Ashton Drive's houses number three and number four, the two end houses right next to the development. And the development hasn't changed from last time. It's still sticking out in front of house number, 30, number three and number four, partially blocking the view of those people which I've had for years. So what with that and the fact that the flood drainage position clearly hasn't been resolved and hasn't been uh, decided upon, we said I would like to suggest that we are willing to state again that we feel this is a bad decision that we feel that the, these, these buildings shouldn't in fact be knocked down, but they should be developed as something else, and because they're pretty good buildings. Um, so because they're, it's, over, it's overbearing, and because it's overlooking the number of pro properties, somebody surely somewhere is going to be willing to stand up and say, look, this is the wrong decision. So I'm going to ask you to be very brave with you, will and I hope that one of you is willing to move the refusal of this planning application. Thank you very much. Thank you, Okay, again, there's been a couple of points raised in terms of uh, parking restrictions and uh, the parking spaces. Um, Keith, could I ask you to cover that aspect, please? Thank you, through you, Chair. And in, in, in traffic terms, this, this application is, is identical um, to the previous application on this site. Um, my view of this is that you know, this is a sustainable location, so if there were anywhere where it was acceptable to have less than the maximum amount of parking on site, then this is one of those locations. Um, good, uh, good links to local facilities and uh, public transport in the area. Um, in terms of any displaced parking, or any overspill parking that may take place, um, we do have waiting restrictions around the adjacent uh, junction to protect that from parking, so I'm satisfied that any parking, any overspill parking that does take place won't cause any highway safety um, issues in the area. Um, so, and, and in terms of the traffic generation by this, this number of properties, Again, it's, been, um, it's, it's going to be minimal, um, so uh, my view is that there are no sustainable grounds to um, object to this application on the highways. Could I just ask you to cover Mrs. Clayton's um, point of view that there should be 27 parking spaces, please? Uh, yes, thank you for your chair. The, the council's SPD um, is calculated based on the number of bedrooms mm -hmm. per um, residential property. So for um, uh, for two bedroom properties, one and a half, average one and a half spaces, and for three bedrooms plus, it's two spaces. So she's correct that the maximum is 20.